people are still following, you know, a Moses and have rejected Jesus Christ. But Moses cannot get them to heaven. Even Moses himself didn't even get to the promised land. Talk less of him getting anybody to heaven. He will ha he had to fight his way and be in obedience and ask for forgiveness in order to make it there. So Jesus Christ is the only one. There is no other way. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the only begotten son of the father. He's the only way. Hallelujah. So um, I just want us to take a look at Exodus Exodus chapter 33, verse 3. Even as we're talking about um, Canaan, this is where, where it was described. Exodus chapter 33, verse 3. It says, Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of the for thou art the safe neck people, lest I consume thee in the way. Unto the land was flowing with milk and honey. That was the land that was set aside for them. That was prepared for the children of Israel. That was the land God had given them. Even though that they were in disobedience. And if you read the scriptures you'll see the first group who got to the wilderness did not get to go to the land because they were in disobedience they were in the wilderness for more than they have expected to be because of disobedience so the first group you know it was their offspring who got to see the promised land the ones who disobeyed who who decided to make their own God and uh, out of a golden calf, they did not go. They died out in the wilderness. It's the next generation that was able to go to the promised land. If we look at um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, and this is when God came, um, um, spoke about delivering the children of Israel. He said, of Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, say, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian, and to bring them up out that land unto a good land, and a large, un and a large, and, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, Unto the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzites and the Hivatite um, and the Jebusites. Okay, see, this is what God has spoken. He saw their affliction. He saw how they were suffering, being slave in Egypt. And he himself said he came down to deliver them. But they didn't see him. He uses, you know, leaders like Moses to, to help them to come out. Just so that God himself, when we couldn't save ourselves, everything that we tried to do in order to make it right with God, we couldn't do it. All the different sacrifices that they were doing in the Old Testament, the blood of the animal was not good enough. Because remember, it was a man who had sinned against God. So it needed a man, a sinless man, also to soften the wrath of God. Because God have already said the wages of sin is death. So therefore, all the animal sacrifice was not good enough. It was just like a little bandit. It couldn't really save mankind from um, 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 from the death, from death and from their sins. That's why God Himself came down, just as God came for the children of Israel and to um, deliver them out of Egypt. He also came down 
through Jesus Christ to deliver us out of our own Egypt. Our Egypt represents the lifestyle, the sinful way of man being in bondage to sin. The children of Israel were in slavery in Egypt, but we also were enslaved through sin. Whatever we whatever we we honor that the whatever we honor whatever we, we worship we're enslaved to that and that's why you see mankind was enslaved to sin because mankind could not save themselves and the all the the sacrifice to um, blood of uh, bulls and goats could not do it it was a temporary that's what every year that the priest had to go in and offer sacrifice for himself for his sins and sacrifice and and, and for for the people and it, it there's no guarantee that the sacrifice was not going to be accepted because if the priest was in sin, the sacrifice would not be accepted. He had to make sure that he was right with God. That's why he needed to, to make sure that the sacrifice that he offered for himself was accepted before he can offer sacrifice for the people. And that was being done yearly. So that was not, that was a temporary, that could not save mankind from the wrath of God. So God himself, he decided, he came down through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ mm, became our leader to take us out of, 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 of um, Egypt. Uh, Egypt. Our Egypt was sin, sinful life, all kind of sin of the flesh, all kind of things that, that, that mankind do. So Jesus, our leader, and he will lead us. He's still our leader who will lead us to the promised heaven because that is promising to us. When we come to Jesus Christ, that's, one, that's the major promise that we have, that we will live eternally with him, with the Father in heaven. Jesus said in John um 14 if we could turn to John 14 John 14 let's start with verse 1 Let let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would, would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there ye may be also and whither i go ye know and ye and the way ye know where jesus is that's where we will be huh he, he tells us this is not something that we dream about these are the promises just as god had promised to take the children of Israel to Canaan, a, a, a land will flow with milk and honey. Here, which is our promise, where Jesus said, where he, where there's many mansions in, in, in his father's house. He'll go and prepare a place for us. We have to trust and believe what he says. Just when the children were removed from Egypt, the children of Israel were removed from Egypt, God had already prepared a place for them. And we see that also, it was a good place. Jesus also prepared a place for, for his bride. We are the church, the body of Christ is the bride of Christ, is the bride of Christ. The children, we say the children his father has trusted in his hand. Jesus is that good shepherd. Just as the children of Israel had to come out of Egypt first, we also have to come out of our, our, our own Egypt. Like I said before, the, our Egypt represents sin, darkness, the, the world, sin of the flesh, 
all all manner can all kind of sin that's what our egypt represents those who are not born again those who have not come and make peace with god through jesus christ and accept him as his lord as their lord and savior those who have not repented of their sin they're still walking in darkness walking in their flesh so my brothers and sisters in order for us to come out of it uh, um, um to come out come out of egypt jesus came jesus came he died for us through his blood we have the hope to attain that promise god promised us so that we can enter our own promise and that that our own canaan our own canaan represents heaven our own Canaan is heaven. The children of Israel did not leave Egypt and went straight to Canaan. They went by, by the means of the Red Sea to the wilderness, then, then moved to Canaan. They stayed in the wilderness long, very long, because their hearts were not ready to move to the promise. The, their hearts were not right with God. Our hearts have to be right before the Lord. Before we can enter the promise. Before we can go to heaven. Our promise is heaven. Our canon is heaven. Before we can enter. Our hearts have to be right. Just as the same way when we accept Jesus in our hearts. He does not immediately take us to heaven. Our hearts have to be right before Christ, before God. So what happened? He leaves us in the world so we can go through the process of a cleansing heart. Our hearts have to be clean. There's a lot of junk that needs just because someone say uh, what they say, quote unquote, sinner's prayer. Just because someone accepted Jesus in their heart, that doesn't mean that they are automatically are cleansed from all um, um, sin, from all iniquities. It has to go, This per the person who just born again has to go through a process. They have to allow the Holy Spirit to take them through the process. They have to allow the word of God to clean, to do a cleansing. We cannot just go like that or we say we we'll accept Jesus, boom, we go to heaven. Now we're here. While we're here on this earth, we have to work our salvation through fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. Fear and trembling to know that heaven is not guaranteed just because we accept Jesus Christ. We got to continue the work. Fear and trembling to say there's a, in, uh, any minute, it's, if we, we sin, that and Jesus come or death come, we will not make it. That's kind of thing that should keep us in fear and trembling. Fear and trembling to know God is a holy God. Fear and trembling to know God is not only his holy, he's all-knowing God. And God, he doesn't lie. What he said, that's what he will do. He's not going to make exception for anyone. The way he has everything written, that's the way it's going to go. Because his word has to come to pass. He's not going to alter and change it for us. Especially if we are in sin. We, got, we have to do it his way. He's not a dictator, but we have to be willing to do it his way. He's not going to force us. Because... We can choose to go to heaven and all go to hell. Even after accepting Jesus Christ, heaven is not a guarantee. That's why on a daily basis that we got to work, we got to pick up our cross and follow him. We got to work our salvation with fear and trembling. How do, how do we work our salvation with fear and trembling? It's to trust in his word, read his word, meditate on his word, be a doer of his word. Not just listen to it, not to only to hear it, but to apply it in our daily lives. 
to know that we need to live by the word of God. Even Jesus had already, you remember when he was tempted in the garden by Satan, he used the word against Satan. He said, man does not live by food alone, but at, by, at every word that comes out of, of God's mouth. So we know how important the word of God is. It's our, our, our very existence um, depend on it. Our lively will depend on the word because God would not have given us this word. No matter what people are saying, if they're trying to discredit the word, the word of God will continue to be the word of God. What unto them who try to alter the word of God? They will have to deal with God himself on the day of judgment. Don't mind anybody who's doing things in these last days. We're going to hear and things that were unheard of. Because certain things in these last days, it's like it's lawlessness. The Bible, Jesus told us and warned us about these things. Let us not focus on that. Let us continue to focus on what we know. On what God has given us. Let us hold on dearly to it. Let us keep this word. Let it be written on the tablet of our heart. Because the Bible says so that we don't sin against God. You see how important the word is. Because Jesus is in the word. Jesus is the word. Hallelujah. So before we can enter to the promise. We have to continue to walk in obedience according to his word, according to his statutes, according to his commandments, according to his precepts. Our hearts have to be right before Jesus. We are in this world. He could have taken us up as soon as we accept him. But here we have to continue to that cleansing. Allow the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the word of God to cleanse our heart. We have to shed off the ways of the past, the ways of darkness, so that, the, so that we can truly embrace the light that Jesus brings into our heart. We can prolong the process. Some people prolong the process based on unbelief. Just as the children of Israel ended up spending 40 years in the wilderness. They were confronting a lot of troubles in the wilderness. Cause, and that caused them to murmur. And went to unbelief. We also. As Jesus leaves us. In the wilderness. Meaning this world. This world is represent a wilderness. For us. We will confront. Trials and tribulations. Before entering. But remember. Before we entering into the promise. No matter what we go through, one thing that is true and certain is that if we believe that he will come to take us to the promised heaven, just as God had promised to take the children of Israel through Moses and, and, and Joshua to the promised land, Jesus will come and will and we will go to the promised heaven. Remember. As Joshua crossed over the Jordan. Let's look at. Um, turn it to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. Start from verse 1. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shmitten and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the, the host, and they commanded the people, saying, 
when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from 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 your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way before. This is instruction that Joshua was given and he's passing it on to the children of Israel as they were crossing Jordan so they could get to the promised land. You see, Jesus also have given us instructions. Jesus said he overcome the world. He overcome the world. The, the children of Israel has specific instruction how they were supposed to cross over in order to get to the other side to the promised land. Jesus tells us that he overcome the world. You know what the world represents. We already say the world represents sin and help. It, it represents death. It represents all kind of things that is ungodly. If we turn into um, John 16. Let's see what Jesus tells us here in John 16 verse 33. Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Jesus overcome the world. So we too we will overcome with all that he has given us, so that we can overcome so that we could make it to the promised land. So the promised land is heaven. It's a place where no. <laughs> ah, until we get there, then we will see what God has prepared for us. We have not seen it yet. Some say they have dreams and this. But only what God has opened our eyes to see that we are able to see. Unless the Lord give us a revelation, we just don't know. What we what we read in the book is just a little minute little dot to what the Lord prepared for us. So it really um, um should be an encouragement for us to stay in the race, to stay strong, not just stay in the race, but to stay strong, to keep on going, my brothers and sisters. Good things are coming because good things are promised to us. We must obtain it. Jesus said he overcome the world. You know what it means? He overcome sin. He overcome death. He overcome everything that we can think that is not uh, 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 um, of God. He overcome all everything. So shall we also cross over our Jordan? Because Jesus overcome the world. We will overcome also. Our Jordan represents this world, which is sin, death, the world, everything that's in the world. We will overcome. We will cross over. We will get to our promised heaven and be with him. He has said, where he is, we shall be also. We read that in John 14, verse 3. And... I just want us to take a look real quick at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. Let's, let's read from... Let's read from verse 55. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, 
which giving us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory. God, Jesus already did everything. He paid the price. He overcome everything. It's through him. We're going based on his, um, on his finished work. You see, we don't have to go and carry a cross and be crucified and all this. And, and No, Jesus did it all for us through his blood, through his resurrection. So he paved the way. We all, just we got to do is just stay in it and walk in it and follow him. Keep our eyes on him. Keep our eyes on him. He will take us there. We will reach that promise. We will obtain that promise. You see, the children of, 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 of Israel... Eventually, there was, uh, there was a generation, even Moses didn't step into the promised land, though there was a generation who actually did step into the promised land because God is not a liar. What he said he will do, he will do it. He will bring it to pass, no matter what. For those who didn't get to see it is because they were in, the, in disobedience. Let's learn from them. Let's learn from the past. Let's learn from the, the, the people of the Bible. And let's learn from Jesus Christ, who our leader. He will never lead us astray. Everything he say is not to trick us. He loves us. God loves us so much. He doesn't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to have this eternal life with him. He wants us to, to be um, 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 enjoying the, the many mentions that Jesus promised and say, it's there. It's waiting for us. He wants us to be sitting at the table of the marriage of the Lamb. Huh? When at the rapture, when, when, when Jesus brings and introduces the bride of Christ to the Father. Hmm? Just like a groom is bringing his bride to his parents. He wants us. And we should want it more than he wants us to have it. Let us not be distracted by the things of this world, my brothers and sisters. There are many things that's there to distract us. The devil is there to distract us. Our own flesh is there to distract us. There are certain people, agents who are out there to distract us. Let us stay focused on the prize. Uh, to live eternal with our creator, with our God, to live eternally with him. That enough, that is enough. And to know that Jesus came and he did all that work for us so that we can obtain that promise. Oh, let us endeavor to obtain that promise, my brothers and sisters. And to conclude, I will say, may we all reach our destination at the appointed time at God's time it let nothing happens before his time and I pray that this word will bless many and also you'll get more revelation as we did this contrast between the um, children of Israel their destination to um the promised land, Canaan, as verses to us, children of, of God, born again, follower of Jesus Christ, our destination, which is in heaven with the Father forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for listening. Now, we conclude this lesson tonight. I would ask if anybody have any um, prayer requests at this time. If you have a testimony.